Hey, good evening, everyone, and welcome to BT's Fly Time Friday. Tonight, the 3rd of May, we're going to have the Davenports. They're going to be doing a tag team for us. Or at least that's what they told me, anyway. We're going to find out what a tag team is all about. And on the weekly tip, well, we're going to talk about Bead Easy. We're the Beaties from Boise, Idaho. And joining us tonight are the Davenports from north of Boise, Idaho, but yet in our part of the world, Idaho. Anyway, introducing Brian and Britt are from central Idaho. You can often find them in the mountains chasing west slope cutthroat or on their local steelhead rivers. You can also find them at various fly tying shows across the Pacific Northwest. In their time off, they enjoy tying custom orders for folks, ranging from trout flies all the way up to full dress Atlantic salmon flies, and taking the step further or and making step by step tutorials for the YouTube channel. Hey guys, go for it. Thank you, Al. So um, Brian's looking at me. He does not tie salmon flies, just to throw that out. That's all me. He, he, he patiently just shakes his head and lets me do it um, with that rabbit hole. Um, so thank you for having us on tonight. We decided, um, since Alan Gretchner, a tag team, we thought we could do a little bit of a tag team. All it's going to involve is me tying a few of my favorite flies for OMAC and then Brian tying a few of his for OMAC. So first off, OMAC is a, so I'll start by just providing a little, a few slides. Going to OMAC Lake, it's up on the Colville Indian Reservation. It is kind of in north central Washington state. So here's kind of a map with the location. So kind of between Seattle and Spokane, closer to the Canadian border. The interesting thing about this fishery is that it is an alkaline lake, so it is salt water. Um, so think real similar to Pyramid Lake, only smaller and not near as far for us to drive. It's about five hours to get there from our house, um, as opposed to about 12 to get to Reno. Um, the lake itself is uh, typical of our, our lakes out here, kind of long and skinny. Um, there's public access at the top called uh, Nicholson Beach, which is also known as Beer Can Beach, which we'll get to that here in a little bit, why I named my fly what it is. And then down on the southern end is Cow Pie Beach. It is called that for a reason. There are cow pies all over it. Um, and you fish it um, similar to um, Pyramid. Pyramid, sorry, um, in that you do we don't they don't typically use ladders but you do stand on shore and cast to fish um in the kind of late winter spring they start uh just kind of running those shorelines looking for places to spawn however there aren't any there's no outlets to the lake um which is why it's alkaline and so they they just continuously kind of cruise along the the edge and so you often see pods of fish coming and you can sight cast to them when they're not doing that, which this last summer or this last month, they weren't doing that as much as they have in years past. So it was a lot more just casting out to the drop and then fishing it more like you would a normal lake. But this is just a, a photo of kind of what it looks like, how, how you fish it and an example of the fish. They are Lahontan cutthroat. They are not from the Pyramid Lake strain. They're actually from the original stock when the Colville tribe started stocking it years ago was from Summit Lake in Nevada. Um, and then also later Heenan Lake. So it's got that real nice turquoise blue color. Um, Pretty common with your alkaline water. So it makes you feel like you're on a tropical beach, though the water temperature uh, quickly tells you you are not. Um, but just again, some, some beautiful haunting cutthroat. Uh, they don't get near as big as at Pyramid Lake. Uh, a five to six pound fish is a nice one, but they're generally, you know, you start looking at 20 inch fish and saying, gosh, that was a small one. Um, kind of puts a damper when we get back to our river fishing for West Slopes. So as far as, 
excuse me, sorry. Um, as far as some of the um, things that the fish eat there, there are pea mouth, bridge lip suckers, red side shiners, and sculpins. There's also quite a bit of dragonfly and damselflies. Uh, they also eat other smaller lawns and cutthroat. There's water boatmen and a ton of terrestrials. Every time we go there, the wind is blowing like crazy. And so there's every type of terrestrial you can think of floating around in the water. And then there's also quite a few coronamids. So that's kind of just an overview of the lake. Um, it does get quite deep. It's uh, at its deepest, 330 feet. Um, and so it does drop off pretty quickly on those those ends. Those are the public access points. You can put a boat in. So if you have a boat, it's definitely to your benefit. So you can get to those uh, parts that aren't fished quite so hard. Those two access points almost constantly have people at them. And it does seem like the last few years, there's even more people at them. So if you have a boat, definitely bring it. You can bring kick boats, um, or pontoons. You just kind of have to make sure to keep an eye on the wind. Um, it kicks up pretty quickly and you can find yourself at the wrong end of a lake if you're not careful. You're paddling quite a ways back. And you want a four-wheel drive because those are dirt ramps. Yeah, um, they're not, not improved ramps if you are putting a boat in. So, um, And even just to get to the one end of the beach, it's a um, little bit of a four-wheeling drive if if it's been raining or anything like that, it can be pretty muddy getting in. Um, so uh, with that, does anybody have any questions about the location? Um, as far as the lake goes, the flies we're tying today are going to be flies that we've found successful there. Um, so we just wanted to share them with you. How, how long is the lake, uh, Brittany? Um, it's about seven and a half miles. Oh, so, wow. Okay. A yeah. lot bigger than I thought. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 3,800 acres, um, about seven and a half miles long, and on average, about three quarters of a mile wide, so long but skinny. Um, so generally, people with the kick boats don't get terribly far from the, the put-ins. Um, so if you have a boat with a motor, you're certainly going to be able to get away from the crowd a little bit. Um, I will say, though, every year we've been there, there's been people and everybody just kind of, you know, spreads out and you know, everybody finds their own spot and it's usually just fine. We've never had issues with it. Um, I kind of laugh, though, like we usually get there and everybody's walked up shore. So we'll fish kind of right in front of where we park the rigs. And we usually end up catching more fish than everybody that has walked up further. <laughs> <laughs> So they come back for lunch and we're there catching fish. Um, so can you think of anything else kind of relevant information about um, it? No. I mean, you're not going to be, unless you have a boat with a trolling motor, you're not going to get out too far. Um, last year, this last month, there were some folks with a trolling motor. They headed off to one of the coves where the wind was blowing so hard they, they were having a hard time. But uh, weather can turn pretty nasty. It can, but the thing about the weather being nasty is, if it's cloudy and rainy, drizzly, the fishing's usually a whole lot better than it is when it's beautiful, clear bluebird days, and the wind can. We usually fish a little bit heavier rod because you're usually bucking the wind pretty good. Um, never count on the wind not blowing at all. So we'll be using just a Daiichi 1720, any streamer hook that you prefer is fine. And tying it in a size 8, you can tie it larger or smaller. Um, size 8 is just the, what I typically do. Oftentimes I'll weight it. I do tie them without weight as well. Um, if I'm using weight, I use red thread. So that way the head of it is red and I know it's weighted. If I am tying it without weight, I'll use black thread. Uh, that way I know it's an unweighted one. For the tail, I'm just going to use barbs off of a peacock breast feather. You can also use um, peacock sword if you want. Um, either way works. 
for the body, I'll be using Peacock Hurl and then Semperfly Straggle String in black spun together into a rope. So I get both the peacock look and then I also get some of that UV fleck in there. And then for the collar, it's just another peacock breast feather. Uh, I'm just going to use some a 1.5 lead wire. If you want it heavier, you could certainly use heavier wire. Um, I've got my hook in my vise. Um, if you're using a Norvice, you want to have that hook shank coming straight off the top of the jaws. That way it'll spin in the center. There we go. I'm just going to lay down some of that wire. That was a terrible demonstration of that. It caught the tag end. For the thread, again, we're just I'm going to use the red Semperfly ADOT Classic Waxed. I'm just using red because of that weight. That way it's real easy to look in my box and know um, that it's weighted. I don't have to try to guess. I'm just going to put a few wraps behind that. And then in front of it, you can use the wire to build in a little bit of a taper if you want. Um, that's not what I was intending to do here, but that's what happened. So we're going to roll with it. Um, if you do that, though, your front will be heavier. So it'll be more intriguing action if you have that more wire in the front. For the tail fibers, we're just using some peacock breast fibers. If you know of any great sources for peacock feathers, particularly breast feathers, let me know. So I'm just gonna pull a good chunk of those away. Don't be afraid to use too many. Then we're just gonna attach those right on top of that hook shank. I like to leave the tails a little bit long, but again, that's just up to you. Just wrap those butts down. For the body, this is where, oh, my, sorry, I don't know why my camera keeps sliding. Brian, can you type them in the body? Sorry, I can. So we're just going to use um, the Semperfly Straggle String, and it's just black, so it's really just we're wanting that UV color in there. So I'm just going to clip the length of that. We're going to tie that in at the rear of the hook. Just using a hair clip to hold that material back. If you don't have the little hair clips on your bench, you should get some. They're extremely handy. Uh, for the body, we're just using Strung Peacock Curl. So I've pulled out a, a pretty good chunk, nothing crazy, but you know, don't be too skimpy with it. Just gonna break those front tips off because those are the extremely frail end of it. And we'll just tie those in, tidy up those butt sections. And then I'm just gonna put a half hitch in. And so normally there's various ways to reinforce your peacock curl. You can use a wire to reinforce it. You can wrap it around your thread like that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use my vise to my benefit, and I'm going to take my bobbin holder over to my thread post. I'm going to take that peacock and that straggle string together. So they go to all clumped up in one big pile. And I'm going to hold on to the very end of it because we're going to want as much of it as we can because we're using a pretty long hook shank. I'll loosen my tension knob on my legs. I'm just going to spin that into a chenille rope. So now with it like that, it's reinforced. If a fish's tooth catches that, it's not going anywhere. You could still rib it if you want to. Um, if you want just that segmentation or just that added color, you certainly don't have to though. It is reinforced and it is not going anywhere. I've tried using a razor knife on it sometimes and even still it's difficult to get off when you put it on that way. I'm 
we've got our body on. And now the only thing we're going to do next is just that collar. So I'll start by grabbing those tip fibers and this preening the others back so we can isolate the tip. And we're just going to cut a little tie-in point. So we have a little bit of a triangle. Now for these, I really like them over hackled. So you're going to watch it and say, wow, that's way too many wraps. And yep, I know it is. And that's how I like it on these. So I'm just going to tie that in. I found in the water, in the lakes, when I have these hackled quite a bit more, um, they really have a lot more movement and visual quality to them. And so I do with these when I fish them in the lakes, prefer more hackle, unlike if I was wrapping um, just a wet fly, you know, a small wet fly, something like that. So I'm just preening those fibers back. We're just gonna take wraps the collar just touching wrap and if you look there's some of that floofy stuff there that's fine you can strip that off if you want but um, it's actually just adds to the movement in the water now the rachis on these it's very um kind of fragile and really pithy. So when I tie off, I also take my thumb and push it back and kind of flatten that out. And I'm just going to dog leg it just to know that it's in there good and it's not going anywhere. It'll give your head a little bit more size, but you know, your half pull isn't going to come unwound when you're fishing it. I tried doing it how Al showed the other day, uh, wrapping the stem around the thread, and I haven't been able to master it with this material yet, but I'm confident I will. And I just put a coat of head cement on there, um, whichever you like. Right now I'm just using hard as cold penetrator. Uh -huh. I do like it because it kind of soaks into the wraps a bit more. Um, a lot of people are using the UV to finish flies, and it's okay, but I prefer actual head cement or lacquer of some kind. If you're in a rush, that works, but I'm not usually in a rush. So, so that is the Beer Can Blue. Um, the first place I fished it was there on Beer Can Beach, and this is probably the fly that has accounted for the most for us on Omac Lake in the last two years. We didn't have it that first year. Um, the last two years, we've been quite fortunate and done quite well with it. Um, we, we did try just kind of your standard carry special in olive. Um, it worked, but it didn't seem to work quite as well. So have it as you will. This fly, I first saw the pattern and so we live in Lewiston, so most anyone familiar with Lewiston and fly fishing know, or fly tying and fishing knows of Leroy Hyatt. So for many years, he would do an article in our local newspaper and we would clip them out and we have a big binder full of them. Um, so I was looking through it for, for patterns to try and I came across the guarantee, which what I could find was it was made... Uh, created by Carl Paulson of Spokane, Washington. Um, that's really all I could find on it. Um, I you know, did a lot of searching and couldn't come up with much more than that. So if anybody knows more history on it, I would love to know it. Um, so I, I took Leroy's article and I tied one up. Um, I only had the photo of the one in his article. So I don't know if this is more his version of it. I've heard that it's a little different than other people's versions, but I like it this way. So this is how I've been tying it. Um, so we've got just an Arex hook, size 10, which is just a traditional nymph hook. I'm going to be using, I'm actually gonna weight this one so it'll have red thread. Again, just that way I know easily that it's a weighted fly when I look at it in my box. The tail, uh, any barred, 
fibers. Um, so I mean, you could use hen. I'm using teal, uh, wood duck. You know, any any of those kind of waterfowl or hen fibers, grizzly that have that barring on it. For the egg sack on this one, we're using straggle string in fluorescent orange. Um, the original pattern from Leroy's article um, called for orange floss or like unistretch, something like that. But I've opted to change it up to the straggle string with the UV in it. The body, again, is going to be peacock curl. And then the collar, again, is peacock breast feathers. So this is the pattern. It's real, you know, I mean, a lot of these are all real similar to each other with the collar breast, peacock breast. Um, I've been told some people tie it with the egg sack more just as exactly that, an egg sack, more of a, a tag in the back. The photo in Leroy's article showed it um, extending forward to about midway. So that's how I tied it and it works. So I've just stuck with that. So again, we're just going to use an Arex traditional nymph barbless. Gonna mount that in our vise. Again, you can tie them weighted or unweighted, just depending on, on how you want to fish it, if you wanna get it down quicker. I should say too, when we're fishing at OMAC, we're generally it's really fun to catch the fish on four weight rods that don't buck the wind as good. So we usually use five weights. And um, we tend to fish it with a, not a sink, full sink line, but just a five foot fast sink leader. And then there's a piece of straight mono coming off of that. So pretty, pretty easy fishing wise. Um, if we're fishing coronamids, um, a bobber indicator, or we've also had luck just fishing them on a sinking, just that sinking leader and just slowly pulling them across towards the bottom. And we've got quite a few that way as well. If you don't want to do the indicator style fishing. A lot of the people in the kick boats that we see um, will have, you can get a two pole permit. And so they'll have one pole, uh, one rod set up for indicator fishing and the other to sight fish or some people even fish it with dry flies. With the amount of terrestrials on the lake, there's certainly opportunity for dry fly fishing. And this last time, last month when we were up there, we actually saw a few of them coming up to hit those dry flies, um, terrestrials. So it was kind of neat finally seeing that. Um, again, for the tail, I'm just using some teal fibers. Any barred feather will do. And if you put just one wrap over that, you can kind of slide it to the length you want. I'm just going to wrap it right up against those ends of that wire that we put in. So I like to build in a little bit of taper. If you notice on this one, it's certainly the, the orange part tapers up into that peacock curl. So you could use six aught thread, it'd probably go a little bit thicker, but I'm just gonna build up a little bit of a taper with this thread. That straggled string lets us build up some taper too. Just build a little bit with this. So fraggle string, and I'm just using fluorescent red. I think I might try tying it in some other colors too, though. See if they work. Um, maybe a chartreuse or something like that. I'm just gonna tie that in there at that back end. And then advance our thread to about that midpoint. And then I'll just go ahead and put 
a half hitch in because I'm going to bring my bobbin holder over to my thread post. So anytime you go over there, you want to put a half hitch in. Um, that way you're not building up wraps as you go. That first wrap, make sure you tug on it a little bit. It is a, a stretchier cord, so you want to make sure that first wrap particularly is nice and tight. I'm just going to build that body up. And tie that off. Or you can try to get some of those little frizzies and pull them back. And then for the next part, we're just going to use some more peacock curl. Probably grab six or seven fibers or so. Um, it's nice to have that thorax a little bit bigger. Um, just so it can help prop that collar up a little bit. So again, I'm just going to rip those tips off. And tie that down. And again, we're just going to make a rope out of that. So I'm going to put that half hitch in, bring it over. And I'm not, I only need just, oh, goodness. Um, I just need a little bit. So I'm not even going to bring it all the way over to my thread post. I'm just going to do it right here. Loosen that tension nut. Give it a second. So now we've made that peacock rope. Just going to take that forward. And just remember, you have to tie that uh, breast feather in, so make sure to leave room for that. Make sure you've got a nice base to tie that in at so it's not slipping around on you. Um, if you have kind of a, a divot, it'll tend to slide off of it and you won't get nice touching wraps. So again, we're just going to preen those fibers back. We're not holding on to them, that is. There we go. Put in just a little triangle for a tie-in point. And then I like to use the hackle pliers on these just because they're so short um, and they're just real pithy so a lot of times it'll it also break on you so just pull those fibers back and again on this fly I'm gonna over hackle it nope oh, see what happened there it just broke off um, so that'll happen just try to grab back on the best you can And just try to take gentle wraps around. Give it a couple wraps to tie it down. And again, just going to do that same thing with my thumbnail. I'm going to bend that backwards and just kind of mash it down flat. And we'll just incorporate that into the head so it just kind of dog legs it. Again, that way that half hole isn't going to be coming out anytime soon. I'll just trim that away. Try not to trim all your fibers off while you're doing it. And you can go ahead and just put your whip finish on or half hitch, whichever you prefer. That is called the Guaranteed. Again, I don't know if it's exactly how the original was. Um, it's just I'm going off of a Leroy Hyatt pattern uh, or Leroy's rendition of it in an article he did for our Lewiston and Tribune a number of years ago. So those are the two flies that I have to share with you. And so I'll let Brian jump in now and grab all my stuff. All right, the bird of prey. This is a John Anderson pattern. 
And I I like it. Uh, up at OMAC, it's uh, it's kind of a caddis pattern, I believe. Um, yeah, there's no caddis up there, but it's a John Anderson pattern, and I use it up there at OMAC as well as here in the local rivers. Um, the local rivers, I'll fish it on the swing uh, up there. It's a, a twist retrieve. But I'm going to use an A-Rex F. W521 and the size 14. You can tie it bigger, tie it smaller. I just like the 14. Um, we use a gold bead on it to size for whatever hook you're going to use. Thread, I'm using uh, red Simperfly Classic Wax. The tail is partridge. Our rib is uh, Simperfly Pearl Flash. And it has a uh, the body is hair's ear. You can make it any color you want. You can use the, the standard hair's ear. You can use a dark. You can use green. I've, I've sure. orange during the during the fall. We've substituted it in orange for it to imitate the uh, October caddis. And then a peacock collar. And that's all there is to it. That's the most complicated fly that I'm going to tie today. Good thing I got you here to run the techie. And that's all it looks like. Real simple, easy pattern. And uh, like Brittany said, when we were up there on the uh, on OMAC, I just the small ones this year seem the smaller flies seem to work better. And this one cast it out. I had a five foot sink leader on there, and uh, you just let it sink down a little bit, and then start stripping it in a steady, slow strip in front of the fish and one would usually grab a hold of it. So I've already got my bead on my hook and this is a, a curved nymph hook, barbless. So go ahead and I'll start my thread. I like to take it back into the bend and we will take our cartridge feather, get rid of the fluff. I'll peel it down maybe 10. Peel those off. Couple wraps. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a hold of that and pull it in to make it a little bit smaller. Secure that down. Bring that off. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my flash. And I didn't pull it so we don't have to cut it. And I like it to go over to the far side. Not the dark side, but the far side. And then uh, I'm just using hairline, hairline stubbing. Where am I going? There we are. And then we'll just wrap that on. I don't like it to be real tight. I like it to be a little shaggy. Hold that back up. I'm going to go ahead and throw a half hitch in there, and then I'll grab my lash, just rib that up to the bead. 
And we'll secure that off. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a landing pad right here. And I'm going to say, take that same uh, Hungarian partridge feather, strip some more of those long ones down. Pull our fibers down so we've got just that tip. And then I do do like Brittany did, wrap that back so that we can get it locked in good. And then I'll take a piece of strung peacock pearl and kind of looking for one right here. Right there. We only use one piece of peacock curl, but if you see right here, this one's got some better flues on the top. We'll take that rotel part off. And I want to tie this in with those flues pointing down. That way. When I take this one flu or one pearl and wrap it with touching wraps, you can see how full that looks. And put that off. And for this one, I don't like to have a lot of thread showing, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a couple. I'm going to pull it tight and snug that down, and you don't even see the thread. Use a little bit of penetrator. And that's it. Uh, and for myself here, um, you can continue on to the next fly. Quite frankly, I'm gonna. I have a technical problem. I've lost my uh, my camera, so you'll have to continue without a recipe on this one, and and just explain to the folks what you're doing. All right, that's not a problem. So this simple little fly, I. Pretty much just call it a peacock and partridge with a twist. Um, uh, several years ago, Brittany and I went to uh, the Madison and we fished with a friend of ours who was also a guide at uh, Madison River Outfitters. And we uh, he took us over and we were fishing for lake runners. Uh, that's the big rainbows and the browns that come out of Lake Hebgen and come up into the rivers to spawn. The only difference is, is this fly, when he tied it on, we were fishing a size six, and I thought that's a pretty cool little deal. So I took it down to a size 14, 12, 14, and fish it here in the rivers. And this year I just thought, what the hell, we'll take it over to go back and see if it does anything. Um, most of my fish 
were caught on this fly this year? He's fibbing. It was on the beer can blue. No, that was last year. So, so real simple. It's just a guide fly. I'm using a uh, freshwater um, uh, wet fly, just a simple wet fly hook. And uh, again, red thread. The tail is crystal flash. And the body is peacock curl. And then a partridge hackle. And red wire. This one doesn't have the red wire. Yes, it does, but it's buried in there. Red wire. So we'll go ahead and start. And what I do is I just take a piece of crystal flash and I'll fold it in half. And then I'll fold it in half again. And then I'll snip those out. And then I usually have it about the length of the shank. I'm going to get it wrapped back about halfway, and then I'll grab the rest of it. All right, I got my wire tied in there. Now I'll take my peacocker. And what have I got there? About eight pieces. And then we'll throw another half hitch in here. Take our red wire and counter wrap that. The, the wire, like Brittany said, with the making your peacock curl the Norvice way, you don't have to use the wire. I just like to put it in there so it gives it a little extra flash. And then grab one of our Hungarian partridge feathers. I don't know where you're going. Usually with Hungarian partridge, I will tie it in like that and just fold that back. Can reach in here and put that out with my scissors. I have a tendency to break it. And with this one, on, I just go one wrap. Secure that down. Sweep it all back. Give it a whip finish. Put our thread. 
Then on most of my flies, I will take a feather after I put my head cement on there. Run it through the eye to make sure I don't have any head cement blocking my tie. And that's it. Peacock and partridge with a twist. Just a simple little guide fly. Um, again, this one, we'd I'd fish it by throwing it out there um, in OMAC, right on the edge of the drop. If there weren't any cruising fish and just a steady, slow retrieve, um, just a simple hand twist. Um, same thing when uh, we'd see a pod coming, cast out in front of them, give it plenty of room to get down closer to the bottom. If it was up towards the top, they didn't seem to like it as much as they did just slightly off the bottom, maybe six inches and just real slow and steady. And this is another one you can use it in your trout stream, especially if the water's off just a little bit. You know, that little flash, I think it's just enough to get their attention. Um, and then once they see that it's there, then I have no idea what they think it is. I don't care as long as they bite it. I Good with me. <laughs> and that's, I think, pretty much everything we have, Al. Okay, well... Uh I'm unable to get back in. I'm I've joined you through another connection on my cell phone, but it's just you know those things that happen in the wonderful digital world. So okay, well then we're going to be able to go ahead and continue. I don't need this uh, cell phone uh, anymore running on that. I'll set that out of the way. I talked about Beat Easy, and in fact, Beat Easy was a product that we manufactured back in the '90s, and it's you know like a lot of things. In fly fishing, you um, you try something that didn't work, so we don't we don't do it anymore. Uh, but I'm going to use the name anyway because we're going to talk about a couple of easy ways to work with a bead on a hook. And that's it right there. I've got it kind of prepared. I just put a bead on there. I put some thread wraps, and now I'll show you the first couple of um, the first tip, and then the second tip we'll have to kind of build on it a little bit. And the first one is a tip that oh it was a couple of years ago we got from susan parsons who joined us for one of the fly tying fridays and she showed us how to fill the hollow space at the back of your bead now you can wrap a whole bunch of th thread like i have here and it'll still move around yeah. but she takes a bodkin and i gotta get all the crud off my bodkin but she takes a bodkin sets it right in there and starts pulling thread wraps right into that area by using the bodkin to, to slide those those in there and it just tightens it up right away anyway there's that thank you for the, the susan parsons uh, uh arkansas girl now the other thing is i'm going to show you a gary lafontaine trick and I, I learned this from him in the late 80s and quite frankly i'd forgotten all about it uh i'd use it from time to time but didn't think too much about it but anyway i'm going to Slip back over here, and I'm going to grab just a piece of peacock to produce a make-believe fly so that we can kind of set this set this up. Uh, let's get back over here, and I'll just take that piece of peacock and, and tie it on the hook. And I'll just use the weight of the bobbin to hold that uh, peacock there in place as I work my way forward. And uh, I'll take one wrap of thread and I'm gonna use the BT's tie wrap to anchor that so that I don't make a lot of bulk into the head area. I come around the thread around the back to the front, around the back of the thread to the front again wrap the two in place and now it's anchored in place and that's the tie wrap i know i said i was going to rename it to something else and the problem with all of that my friends is that um every time i'd go to mention it i said now what did i call the tie wrap now the the la fontaine trick is uh i'm just going to slip a half hitch in here so i don't lose anything and i get to messing around and sometimes i do 
Anyway, the La Fontaine trick is, I know this never happens to any of you, but it did to Gary sometimes, and it happens to me, that I'll take um, a bodkin and I'll put some glue right there on a what is already a pretty small head, not very much space, and the glue runs back into the peacock and makes it a masked up mess. Don't want that to happen. So here's what we're going to do. Going back over to the materials area, we'll grab uh, the healthy hoof. I'll bring it back to the vise and uh, open it up. Now I'm going to just kind of set it down because there's going to be way more glue on here than I want. And so I'm going to use my bodkin to get myself a little bit of glue. And there it is on there. Now what Gary suggested is that when you have that kind of a situation, you put the glue on the bead. Now I'll grab your whip finish tool and drag through the glue, drag through the glue, drag through the glue, three turns, drag through the glue. It should have cleaned off the head. And now you'll have a nice clean head, small, and no glue in the peacock. And now, folks, it's time for sharing on BT's Fly Tying Friday. And this is where you get to join the fun. All right, John, go ahead. Okay, for many, many years, I've been trying to figure out a way to, 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 to catch the trash on my, on my vice that comes off, especially when I'm doing deer hair flies. And a friend of mine, Mick Bretz, who is the program lead down in St. Louis, showed me this. Now, this is nothing more than a simple embroidery hoop. And what I do, I take that embroidery hoop. Let me turn things around here. Okay. And I use a spring clamp. This is just one of those plastic bags from Walmart or any of the grocery stores. I put that in the, uh, the embroidery hoop. I spring clamp it to the desk underneath my vise, which is in, held in place with a C-clamp. And this works like a champ. I don't get any hair over me at all. It takes, it catches everything. So y'all have probably seen this before many times, but it was I, brand new I'm, to me. I've not seen it. And, and I got to tell you, I'm constantly picking up stuff off the floor where I try to clean out my trash bag and get it into the waste bucket. And all you have to do on that thing is pull it loose and grab the bag and run. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. So <laughs> wonderful. John, thank you. I, I've got one, I've got one little thing for you guys. If you guys uh if you got a minute. Absolutely, Rick. Um, so since I've uh since I semi-retired from work, uh, I've been doing a lot of traveling and I got all my fly tying stuff with me because I need to, you know, have it with me. Um, but the uh the one thing that I was always was worried about was a light. Um, because I mean, most of the lights are big and bulky and, you know, so I found these on Amazon. They're only about a half an inch thick like this, but they open up and then you can have them however you want. And then they're LED, right? right. They're LED, they're LED and they're, they're rechargeable on your computer. They're just a USB-C and they work all my videos that I do for my YouTube channel. That's what the light is. Well, everyone, we've had a great time this evening with all of you on Fly Tying Friday with the BDs. Please join us again next Friday. But for now, it's a wrap.